yeah, you know, sometimes we get these uh, clever, these clever mental uh, uh, responses. Sometimes they'll say, well, who are you talking to? You know, like, like you're sharing, like, who are you? You know, the non-duals. And, uh, and you know, that's a good meditation, but not for the mind. The mind's like stupid. It can't, how's the mind going to understand existential things? It thinks it can, thinks it can understand everything. It really can't understand anything. It can understand simple stuff like, you know, pick this paper up and put it here. But, you know, we're talking about like <clears throat> recognizing, realizing our true divine nature. So it's a good contemplation. That's why I want to talk about it. If, if I don't exist, okay, if I don't exist, then who are you listening to right now? And who's the one that's listening? Okay, don't give that to the mind. Otherwise, then we just sound like the, the, the next non-dual uh, uh, video, you see? We're not, we're not trying to be clever. We want to use this, use this question, this potent question, to actually elevate the consciousness. Consciousness starts to realize its own self. This is the whole game and purpose in life. Consciousness first loses itself purposely, divine mistake. It identifies with the form. It says, all right, I'm gonna identify with like a super limited form and I'm gonna believe that's like who I am. Like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm consciousness, man, I got this. I'll just realize like that's not who I am. All right, good luck. <laughs> and a million years later, it's like, ah, I finally did it. So that's the first stage. The consciousness identifies with this human form and becomes delusional and has amnesia and forgets everything. Then, because God's running everything, we can't miss. Like everyone's gonna awake at some point. I think, I'm, I think that's a title for a video I'm gonna make. Um, the next stage is consciousness starts to want to disidentify with the form and recognize something knows, you see? It's, it's already been implanted. The, the consciousness knows it's not this body, but it doesn't know it deeply yet. It's like it forgot, but then it starts to remember. And then this is the game of evolution and it just keeps continuing. Consciousness can always know itself more. So there's certain questions, you can say self-inquiry or non-dual uh, questions that can help accelerate this spiritual growth process if non-dual or advice or, or self-inquiry is your, that's, that's your spiritual practice based on your temperament and character and all kinds of things. Some, some people, that they're, they're deeply devoted spiritually, very spiritual people, aware people, but they're like non-duality, like they're it's like just silly. They're bhakti, like that feels really good for them. They just want to, they just want to look at their, their deity or they, maybe they have a living guru and just, just do that. They get absorbed in that same same process, <clears throat> but we're we're more um, we're more vata type, more intellectual, more knowledge type. So we we, we like non duality and self inquiry. You can't choose this stuff. It's already been downloaded. It's just a matter of discovering it. So when we say this question, who 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 if I don't exist, who are you listening to? You see, just the contemplation of the question is doing the work. Now, now the <clears throat> the fake non-duals, they'll give an answer. Well, you see, it's like uh, you know, it's consciousness. See, it's it's the conscious, it's the consciousness, and it's like trying. It's not trying, but there's an apparent of of a me that's like talking and listening. But I don't know. They just give you know whatever. <laughs> what does that do? You can even feel it. It has a restless uh, connotations and vibrations to it. It's like the mind's trying to imitate the, the infinite, you know? It's like, yeah, I got you, infinite. I know more than you. Like, I'm going to explain how you work. <laughs> so don't do that. And if you do it, it's cool, but catch it. And then just try to, try to be aware of that and stop doing it. That's all. If I don't exist, what do you mean I don't exist, though? I'm here, right? I'm here. Remember my spiritual technique for the non-duels? You take a rock and you hit yourself and see if you feel like you exist, it's a good one. So if I don't exist, then what's happening? What's, what's talking here? Like, like uh, you know, I'm talking, right? I hear myself talking. 
Oh, maybe that's a key. Wait a minute. I hear. Who hears the talking? Okay, so there's something deeper beyond the talking because I'm hearing. I'm hearing talking, but yet I'm saying, <clears throat> I'm saying that I'm talking, and then there's something else saying, but I hear the talking. <laughs> huh? It's weird. I hear the talking. Who? Who? Who hears the talking? Like, tell me who you are. You hear the talking can't it can't say what it is so then the mind will come in and say i'll talk for him so what it is see is he's consciousness and he's present <laughs> right that's what happens that's cool you can say there's a time and place to say that if you really know what you're saying don't think you got anything figured out so then why even talk because it's fun somebody was asking me like why do you make the, the videos some people are <clears throat> that I know that are spiritual don't make videos. They just sit in silence and they, they be quiet with it. That's cool, that's what their destiny is. If everybody did that, who's gonna be here to, to keep the game running and help the show go on and help other people? <laughs> if, <laughs> right, like isn't that, isn't, can't this be a form of uh, service and karma yoga? But see, we don't choose that. There, there's, there's beings and yogis in the Himalayas that just stay in the mountains. They don't see anybody. They're not choosing to do that, though. This is this is how their destiny unfolded. Nasargadatta. It's a little better. You you, you guys uh, know, I think, some of you about his story. He came into an awakening, and then his mind said, uh, "Go to the Himalayas now, because you're a yogi, and that's what you're supposed to do." And then he went there, but something wasn't. It wasn't true. You still had to do it to have the experience that it wasn't true. You see, everything's a lesson and everything's good. But it wasn't, uh, the, the reason I'm giving that example, it wasn't a divine ordained destiny. He wasn't destined to go out there. How do you know? Because he went out there and he wasn't feeling right. He didn't, he was like, kind of like, why am I here? But that was in the background. He wasn't listening to that too much. So then God manifests as, as another high level yogi that meets him. He says, why are you out here, man? He says, well, I'm, I'm awake. Like, what do you mean? That's what you do. You, you go to the Himalayas, and that's what you do. And the guy's like, uh, no, nah, it's not like that. You don't have to. Maybe some people, yeah, but you, like, it doesn't look like you belong here, you know? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. You should go back. You got a family. Go back to Bombay and, and uh, sell your beaties and cigarettes and smoke them and have fun and give lectures. And Nasir Sargata's like, yeah, that does... That is better. I missed my my cigarettes. So then he goes back and he you know he chills. He's happy. So but there's some yogis who do. They sit in a cave. That's what they're supposed to do. They didn't choose. They didn't say, "Oh, the world's so stupid. Nobody understands me and and uh, you know, there's no need to talk or anything." So I'm out. No, they just destiny put them there. Put them in the cave. And they enjoy their, their life because they're supposed to be there. And they're emanating the vibrations on a cosmic level that we we can't perceive um, so tangibly. See, uh, did I veer off? Maybe a little. So if I'm uh, if I'm not uh, if I don't exist, there is an existence of something though, right? Something has to admit that. That's why some of these. Uh, <coughs> Vita teachers, it just consciousness don't exist. Nothing, you know. Those that listen to that, well, you probably won't be here, but if you are, does that make you feel good? It only can make the mind and ego feel good. Why? Because then the mind and ego thinks it found the secret to life. It's like, yeah, I got it. I mastered it. I conquered it. I know now that nothing exists. You see, everybody's mind is trying to do their awakening and it just doesn't work. It's the total opposite. Life is uh, opposite on, for most things. It's when you just give it up. You just give the mind. I don't know anything. Like you say, I don't know anything. I can honestly say that right now, and I mean it. I don't know anything. Well, why? Because I'm not like knowing what I'm saying. I'm speaking spontaneously. It's flowing like this. I enjoy it, but I'm not thinking like, oh, I know something. No, this is the play I'm sharing, and, and I don't know. I don't, I don't know. See, there you go. I don't know. So contemplate that question. It's a good one. It's a good meditation. And be aware when the mind comes in and starts trying to understand it and trying to give an answer. When you say, you know, D 
do, I don't exist. What does that mean? Or do I really exist? Like, what is that? Just, just, just don't think about it. Just put the question and let the question do the work. And then tell me what you find. I want to know. All right. See you.